Well, good morning, and I'm sure you can hear us today, right? Amen. All righty. So um, thank you for coming, and we're glad you're here, and we're not sitting on the sides, but I have to warn anybody, make sure you don't go past Scott, because this tree is bombing us. All righty. Be very careful. In fact, Scott might just uh, get hit himself. Well, I'm glad to have you all here. Um, we are all familiar faces, but we may have a couple folks uh, just sort of stopping by to say hello or see what we're doing here. And, of course, they're all welcome. We're glad to have you all here. Um, we'll have announcements up with some announcements right now because I didn't put them into the program. Um, I'm recovering from carpal and trigger finger surgery, um, and that's all good. Mary Lawrence is at home after having a shattered tibia, so she has numerous weeks of recovery to go yet bill hawk fell yesterday so watch and love bill uh, he thought he could pick a tomato he couldn't so we gotta watch out for him he face planted luckily in the grass and that's a good thing so for bill any other people we need to remember please yes joan I have not heard anything from the Eastons this week. Or have any? Has anyone? I'll check in on them at it after worship. Okay, since no one else has heard anything. Yes. Oh, for Jean Carr, our friend Jean Carr from years ago. She uh, she just needs some encouragement. Finding some depression issues. Alrighty. So let's begin with our bulletin. It's printed, the welcome. It's the same one we used last time. And let's begin, and then afterwards we'll sing a muham, a hummed song. Oh, come all ye faithful. I'm going to say the words. I'm not going to sing them. I'm going to say them. We want to follow correct protocol here. But let's start with our welcome. I welcome you. We welcome you. My life is changed because you are near me. Let's not forget that God is near to all who call from their hearts. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, I have the scripture printed in the bulletin, and um, I want you to read along with me aloud if you can, because um, 
and I'm going to want you to be able to refer to it uh, as we go along in the message. So let's read from Matthew 21 together. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? But Jesus said to them, I will ask, I'll ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of a human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he's going to say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. He said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. All righty. So here is our scripture, which, you know, uh, at first, when I first really read this, I was a little bit disappointed. I was a little irritated. And by the way, I can only see your eyes, so I want you to give me really good eyes. It's hard to see, to, to read your faces, and you know, even you, your scowls sometimes come through your masks. So give me good eyes. I need good eyes, okay? So <clears throat> this was a little unsatisfying to me. I don't know about you, because we have this bizarre question and answer going on between Jesus and do you remember who the people were? It was the chief priests and the scribe or the elders. And it's this question and answer thing going on about um, why Jesus has authority to teach what he's teaching. Well, you know, Jesus, though, starts to play a mind game or uh, uh, he's tricking, trying to trick them or something because he says, what does he say to them? He says, hey, listen, if you answer this question correctly, then I will tell you where the authority is coming from. So these poor chief priests and the elders, they, you know, they huddle together <laughs> and, they, and they suddenly they realize we're stuck in a quandary. If we go with this way with the answer, he is going to tell us, well, because you don't, you really didn't believe in the first place. And if we go with this answer, it's going to make all the people around us angry at us. So what do they do? I don't know. Sounds like a lot of government that we have these days. We don't know. Well, somebody's got to make the decision. So Jesus then says to them, well, I'm not going to tell you then. Guess what? Forget it. So, you know, that's sort of an unsatisfying um, question or, or story to really be reading. But then he goes on in this, this parable afterwards, which I don't know if it made sense to you or not. There were two sons, and the two sons were told to go out and do work in the fields or wherever it was. And uh, the first one um, said... Uh, no, ain't going to do it. Well, later on, you know, he was really a good son, and he decided, I'm going to go do it. it it's, Dad needs my help, All right? So he goes to the second son, and the second son says, you bet, Dad, I'm going to be, I'll be right out there. And, of course, Dad goes away, and what happens? He goes away. He tricks his dad. He doesn't go. And so Jesus asked the people, I'm not sure who he's talking to, if he's talking to the chief priest or talking to the people around him, but, you know, he says, so who served his father? And they said, well, of course, it was the first one because he actually went. And then Jesus says, well, guess what? Uh, the same thing goes then for people like you and me and people out there in the world. Um, and he used two 
categories of people. Do you remember the two categories of people who he was talking about were going to go to heaven before them? Do you remember who it was? Tax collectors and prostitutes. Dun, dun. So we have Jesus telling them that something beyond their understanding is going to happen. Because what do you think? They think that they're the best. They think that they have done all the right things and that they're, they're going to go to heaven first. Well, and then Jesus tells them, not, tells them a different thing. This is a crazy, crazy mixed up whole thing that we have here, this whole question of authority. Now, what, do you, what is, in essence, what is authority? What is it? Power, exactly. So we have what's going on, a question between the chief priests and Jesus, who has the power? That's all the question, that's all that's going on here. And uh, it's a silly thing because why are, the, why are the chief priests worried about who has the power? Aren't they the chief priests? <laughs> don't they have the power? Well, they must realize that they don't because they're asking Jesus how, you know, they're so afraid of him. Why are you, why, how do you have this authority? Well, well, Jesus, though, in the end, he really doesn't, worry so much about the power. He, he decides the power is not the question that he needs to be asked here. He says, you know, um, because he doesn't answer where the authority is coming from, he basically is declaring the big question is not about power in our lives. What is going to be the question? Not power, but whether or not you're going to listen to God. And when God tells you, like, he told, like the Father told the sons, to go out and do something, what's going to really matter is obedience. Now, that's a bad word for a lot of us, right? Who likes to be obedient? No? Really? Come on. A Bill Hawk does not like to be obedient. <laughs> right? So nobody wants to be obedient. It's a toughie. But, you know, that's really what the story is about. And it's not so much about obedience. It's Jesus is saying, we shouldn't be wasting our, our whole discussion in all of our time, in all that we do, talking about who has the power. Who has the power is not the question. The question is, who is going to answer the call to serve? That is what we should be placing all our time in. Not about, oh, okay, who over here? Jeff, do you have the power? No, nope, don't. Jeff doesn't he doesn't think he has the power. Rick, you have the power? Jane, oh, mate, I think Jane has the power. Jane has the power. She has declared that she has the power. We could go round and round, and everybody could say, oh, well, I have the power, or no, he has the power, or no, I have the power, or no, Scott has the power, right? <laughs> Scott knows, nope, Sherry has the power. <laughs> but, you know, that's all tiresome. Who has the power? It's not only tiresome, it's worthless because it accomplishes nothing. Other than the fact that I think that we have realized that oftentimes people who try to assert power, that just leads to death. I mean, you know, a fight for power is just a, a, a fight to the death sometimes. So that's not really the question that Jesus says we're supposed to be talking about. Jesus says we're supposed to be talking about service. We're not supposed to be talking and wasting our time thinking, oh, well, you know, so-and-so is more important or so-and-so has the authority to say this or do that. And we're going to spend all of our time and all of our legislative time and all of our congregational time trying to figure out who has the power. No. Jesus says service. Service is the A number one thing 
that we should always have in our mind. When I got to this church, honestly, I told, I don't know if Elsie remembers this, I don't know if she was on the committee then, but I basically said the Outreach and Missions Committee should be the most important committee at the church. A number one, the number one thing. And I really sort of think it's turned out to be that way. I love the way the church has responded that way. That is the one committee that we don't have to beg people to be on. You realize that? Why do you think that is? It's because people are getting the opportunity to serve. A number one, what have we done? We've done the Making a Difference Scholarship. We raise the money and we do that. We are serving the young people of our, 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 our town. We are setting an example, and we're sort of leading the way through uh, the making a difference because of our open and affirming stance, because we stand for uh, gay and lesbian folk, and we stand with them in everything that we do, and people of color and anyone who's oppressed. We stand for them through our open and affirming. And that committee is the reason why it's growing. It's the group that wants to do the things. We are also doing the back, we support the backpack program. I don't know if the committee does so much there, but they do take the time to, um, to promote it. You all receive something in your hand today. You should see it. Wonderful. Outreach and Service Committee, or uh, Outreach and Missions Commission, uh, Committee has sent out all the things that we can do to serve others. This is what we should be doing. We do the Thanksgiving meals and the midwinter meals. Amen. We are opening up the church to like the Tibetan. Do you know we have a Tibetan heritage group meeting at the church? We have a Tibetan heritage group, a bunch of elders teaching young people about their heritage in Tibet. Well, they're not meeting now, obviously, because of COVID. But we're doing that. We've opened our doors to them. We have opened, and even though they support us by giving us monies, we have now nine 12-step groups. And they're there, the good thing about it, they're there when we aren't. That's the wonderful thing, is that our building is used and used and used for one thing, and that is service. And that is the answer that Jesus is wanting us, or is making the question so important. He's not saying, let's talk about power, people. Who's going to be the bright and shiniest and most powerful and Who's going to wield power over Essex? What Jesus is asking us at the First Congregational Church in Essex is, are you serving your brothers and your sisters? And that is what we have been asked to do as Christians. And I, have, I, 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 I cannot tell you how pleased I am that that is something that you have really realized and taken to heart and it's something that you do on a regular basis so much. So God bless this church for caring for others, for feeding, for clothing, for affirming, like I said, the LGBTQ uh, population, and for anybody who is in need. I am so grateful that you have answered that call. Would you now... Um, uh, we raised a couple names uh, in prayers. Is there anything else that we need to remember in our time of prayer here? Anything else you'd like to lift up? Okay, let's gather our hearts and let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you so much that the call that you have made to serve is rich and it is deeply taken root in this, your servant church, the First Congregational Church in Essex, we thank you that so many people care for others who oftentimes go unnoticed, for people who are told to be quiet and don't be themselves, whether they be the tax collectors or the prostitutes of town, or whether they be the lesbian or gay people or anybody who might be a person of color or different nationality that needs lifting up because they're otherwise ignored and not cared for, really. Thank you, O oh Lord, to the people of this church that they have answered that call. I thank you, Lord, for 
uh, our wonderful medical services here, people who've been able to take care of our friend Bill, Mary Lawrence, I thank you for the wonderful medical services I have received as well. Each and every one of us have been a, a, uh, been blessed with that kind of uh, access to health care. And so we pray then others have access to health care also. Instead of it being taken away from them, we pray that others receive health care without it being a hurdle to get there. I thank you uh, from the goodness of your being, O oh Lord, that, um, yes, we can serve the town. I pray for the people in the west of the United States who are going through these terrible uh, storms of fire. We pray for rain and we pray for the safety of firefighters and those who are in the, in the path. We pray for um, our southern shores and even along our coasts as hurricanes have, have touched us too often this year. We pray for those people and how might we be of service to them. We give you good thanks at the same time, though, Lord, that our Connecticut Conference, which is now the Southern New England Conference, has a new leader. We have a new conference minister, and that we elected him yesterday, and we've welcomed him in with uh, open arms for a new season of service. Lord, so many things across this group of people that can be prayed about but not have been spoken. We'll enter in a short time, Lord, of, of quiet so each and every one of them can, can speak it or think it and pray it. And then we're going to speak words together, O Lord, the ones that you taught us, that draw us together. So hear us each as we reach out to you in prayer. Blessed Lord, for all those suffering from the COVID-19 scourge, for the families who have lost over 200,000 people in our nation alone, such a tragedy. We pray for those families and pray for everyone who had received, who had received, suffered this and, and but lived and now has a lifelong problem to recover from it also. We pray that we are good stewards and that we wear our masks and that we stay careful and distancing and that our love shines through our actions, the love that you first gave to us. We pray the prayer you taught us by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Alrighty. So we're going to close our service, and we're going to hum another song. It is, sure, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And again, Kevin is going to give you an introduction, and then we're going to hum it, and I'll speak the words aloud for us all. So, Kevin, why don't you lead our song? Bulwark never failing. 
our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. Were not the right one on our side, the one of God's own choosing. Dost ask, who may that be? Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaot, his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. my friends, I thank you for gathering here in the beauty of our town where we won't be able to gather probably too much longer as the season is changing. But one thing will not change, and that is the love of Christ for each and every one of us. But not just us. That's why we serve. It is for everyone, and especially those who are often forgotten, who are often oppressed and brought down instead of lifted up. So may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, may it be yours and for yours to pass along to others this day and forevermore. Amen. Blessings. If you are